Hello, and welcome to our State of the School video. Today is Founders Day. Founders Day is an important day for the Sisters of Notre Dame de Namur and for all of their schools and mission. This was the day that St. Julie Billiard officially launched her uh, mission and the women that followed her for the education of young women. And so it's an important day for us to be able to pause and recognize uh, what a wonderful, bold and uh, robust mission we have here at Notre Dame San Jose and what a joy it is to be working here and to be learning here in this mission. This is also the beginning of Black History Month, which is another important moment for us um, in our history and our uh, culture and uh, what is happening in the United States. So we have been working very hard uh, this year on recognizing uh, race, equity, and inclusion. And so in particularly in Black History Month, we will be taking time to pause and reflect on the work that we've done and the work that we will do. So I welcome you both here. I welcome you here tonight uh, for the beginning of this uh, video. We take great inspiration from both our mission and the diversity of this school. I'm happy to share with you tonight the state of the school and bring you some updates about programs and we'll be doing this via video. I'd like to start with a little health check on the school. So we all know in the pandemic, we're very focused on our health and our safety. So let me give you some high level indicators of health for Notre Dame San Jose. I want to start with the enrollment. Our enrollment is very strong and um, continues to be as we move into the second semester. It's also strong in our recruitment of the class of 2025. In fact, we've had many student, student applicants for that class come to campus one-on-one -on -one for socially distanced interviews so that they could see the school that they're applying to. Um, the, in, the enrollment is a really keen indicator of our health. Another um, indicator that I want to share with you, we're just gonna do a little check mark on these, is our teacher's commitment uh, to teaching um, and to program. So you have seen this yourself in your homes on the screens, our teacher's ability to pivot from one model to another, from remote learning, moving towards hybrid learning, and then back again. So our teacher's commitment to uh, instruction and student learning in the classroom is very strong and we're proud of that. I also want to um, do a little check mark on our ability to pace along with COVID requirements um, in the pandemic and our commitment to safety. And as we continue to work on our campus when people are here, our commitment to those safety procedures is very strong. Our financial landscape is healthy. And I share that with you because you deserve to know this. Our board of directors um, has an audit every year on our finances. And this year, like in previous years, our audit was very strong uh, with no concerns. And we are planning for the future. We are planning for the future beyond the pandemic and uh, the longer term future for Notre Dame San Jose. So I share all of that with you to let you know that in this school year, 2020, 2021, we are in good position and in a position of strength. Following me, you will hear from many of my colleagues who will talk about some of these aspects that I've already mentioned. Erin Silva, our Director of Teaching and Learning, will talk a little bit more about the instruction, the teaching and learning in the classroom. John Bracco, the Vice Principal for Student Affairs, We'll talk about our campus, our safety, our protocol with COVID-19 and improvements that we have coming forward. Susana Garcia, our Vice Principal for Enrollment, will talk about how we have been committed to our initiative for race equity and inclusion and the work that we have done and we will continue to do. And then finally, Catholic, Kathleen Kiazan, our Director of Mission and Ministry, will, follow, will close us up with um, uh, some thoughts on our shared purpose here with our mission. So I look forward to seeing you at the end of the video um, to talk about next steps. So enjoy, thank you. Hello Notre Dame, my name is Erin Silva, and I'm the Director of Teaching and Learning. 
I can't believe that we've made it through half the school year already. If you remember at the beginning of the year, I told you that our faculty and staff had embraced the motto, yes, we can. We started the year with the challenge of trying to figure out how do we keep students learning and build community beyond the walls of our campus. Our teachers have had unwavering dedication to help students stay engaged, to help them feel like they belonged and cared for. And they've done this in a virtual space using a variety of digital tools. They've created very interesting and relevant projects and innovative ways of keeping students communicating and collaborating with each other to build the skills they need for today and for the future. We've also been doing a lot of work on campus in order to get ourselves ready for a hybrid model. In November, we launched a hybrid pilot program. Three of our teachers started working with students both on campus and in the virtual environment to see what the best practices were for teaching in a hybrid program. We were so excited to invite these students back to campus and it was such a joy to hear them in the hallways laughing with one, one another instead of only in the Zoom space. We will continue to explore these practices, opening up a few more classes in, in February. And our hope is to invite more and more students to be on campus with us and enjoy our new building and being in community in person. I want to extend a heartfelt thank you to our parents and families that have been supporting our students at home. We could not be doing this work without your partnership. We feel so lucky to be part of your experience in this challenging time. And please let us know if there's anything that you need from us. Know that we continue to think about you and carry you in our hearts as we explore this new environment of education. Hello, my name is John Brocco, Vice Principal of Student Affairs, and I would like to bring to your attention the many changes and improvements that we have made to the Notre Dame campus in preparation for more students and staff starting this second semester. Probably the biggest improvement to campus has been the opening of the Center for Women's Leadership. With 13 new classrooms, the new building increases our capacity to offer more socially distant learning spaces for students. To ensure that all persons coming to campus are healthy, staff, students, and visitors are required to complete a daily health verification through ServiceNow, a software application that was specifically designed to meet our needs here at Notre Dame. Each person who completes the health verification will receive a QR code that will be scanned by a Notre Dame staff person prior to entry. Once on campus, Students can use the hand sanitizer stations located at the entrances to each building. There are also hand sanitizer dispensers located in classrooms, hallways, and offices, and two portable hand washing stations located in Pardini Park. In order to remind students to keep six feet of distance between each other, these sunflower and directional markers guide the way to buildings, hallways, and classrooms. Each classroom has been reconfigured to ensure six feet of distance between students. In addition, classrooms are also equipped with CDC approved disinfectant spray that is used on desks and common surfaces at the end of each class. And our maintenance and janitorial staff clean and disinfect classrooms on a daily basis. HVAC systems in both Manly and Donnelly and the Center for Women's Leadership have been reprogrammed to increase fresh air flow. CDC recommended MERV-3 filters have been installed to help keep that airflow clean. With the addition of more in-person hybrid classes this second semester, students will be able to stay on campus and work remotely for classes that only meet online. We have dedicated the classrooms in the second floor of Manly and have assigned student spaces to continue to work remotely throughout the school day. As many of you may know, we have, been, we have had students on campus participating in several co-curricular activities. Students have been participating in socially distant in-person strength and conditioning since September. And in addition to strength and conditioning, we have been offering socially distanced dance, tech theater, and starting in January, Robotics has been on campus preparing for a modified first 
competition. Looking ahead, I am pleased to announce that the Third Street Visitors Lot will be converted to include additional seating, picnic tables, and a large canopy. This will provide additional outdoor, socially distanced gathering spaces for lunch and other activities. And finally, I want you to know that as the on-campus COVID designee, I'm responsible for monitoring that the school community follows all health protocols, social distance guidelines, and adheres to county and state requirements for schools. Each week, I participate in meetings with the Santa Clara County Office of Education and the Santa Clara County Public Health Department that provides the latest COVID-19 information as it relates to schools and keeping students safe. As we move forward and invite more students and staff back to campus, families can also expect frequent communications from me regarding both academic and co-curricular plans. We certainly look forward to seeing more students and staff on campus in the coming weeks. My name is Susana Garcia. I serve as the Vice Principal of Enrollment and I'm standing in Julie Billiard Hall. More commonly known as the gym, this is a space on our campus that typically showcases a diversity of student talents from visual and performing arts and student government on the stage to athletics and robotics here on the courts. It is a space that usually calls together our diverse student body for assemblies and spirit week rallies. And even now I can easily imagine the students all gathered here, arms linked together and singing the alma mater as generations before them have. Notre Dame's diversity has long been a source of pride and celebration for our community. And it also calls us to more. For several months, I've been sitting with a quote by Maya Angelou. It's a quote that was also referenced by Dr. Brett Solomon in a panel that was hosted by the Black Student Union this past fall. In the quote, she says, do the best you can until you know better. Then when you know better, do better. For me, it is a quote about holding grace and accountability together. And each of us at Notre Dame are committed to knowing better and doing better always. You've already heard from my colleagues, Aaron De Silva and John Bracco, who addressed our work to know and do better with teaching in the pandemic. Today, my state of the school update to you is specific to the race equity, diversity, and inclusion work that we're doing as a community. I'd like to share with you an overview of the work that has been completed, that is in progress now, and that we will undertake in the semester to come. Over the summer, Notre Dame hired a consultant uh, who's also a graduate with professional expertise in this area and in this work. Jess Pierce started by assembling a task force of different constituents that have been guiding our school through this important initiative. In the first semester, we started individual and institutional audits, as well as focused on trainings across all of our constituencies. We've done very good work together in this past semester. Related pieces that are now in progress include the recommendations put forth by the task force and finalizing our institutional statements and policies. Looking ahead to the remainder of the academic year, we will complete these institutional tasks that will position us for next year and beyond. And then the work will continue. So I'd like to thank you for your partnership. Um, all of us are called to know better and do better. And like the motto we sing in our alma mater, Ora at Labora, may we all continue to work and to pray every day. My name is Kathleen Kiazan, and I'm proud to serve Notre Dame as Director of Mission and Ministry. Today, I'm pleased to welcome you into the Center for Women's Leadership. Take a look with me into our new prayer and meditation room, a space that will become on this third floor a sanctuary for our 21st century Catholic community, 
one that lifts up our multi-faith, multi-racial, and multicultural diversity. Our mission is inspired by the Sisters of Notre Dame de Namur and the commitments they make to embody goodness, justice, and solidarity in their global ministries. As part of the Notre Dame Network, we join with our sister schools around the world to celebrate Foundress Day. Today, 217 years ago, the congregation was begun by St. Julie Billiard and Francoise Blain de Bourdon. We are glad to continue their legacy of Notre Dame Catholic education. Now each year, the faculty and staff identify one of the seven hallmarks of a Notre Dame de Nemour learning community as a point of focus for our own formation, prayer, and work as educators. This year, we chose hallmark number three. We educate for and act on behalf of justice and peace in the world. This Notre Dame hallmark is so fitting for this unique year. In the efforts you heard named by my administrative team colleagues, I hope that you too can hear how education for justice and leadership are permeating our work for mission. I want to share with you that this same hallmark is well represented by the engagement of our students in their own spiritual seeking, their learning, leadership, and their justice advocacy. At this mid-year moment, our students have reported over 10,000 hours of engagement in service and justice experiences, with those being in-person, virtual, and even home-based opportunities. Our students are using their creative talents, authoring children's books, making masks, and publishing justice articles, all to bring awareness or to raise funds for causes that they care about. They are meeting the needs of neighbors who are struggling, perhaps with isolation, with health care, or hunger. And our students are hosting spaces to learn and to take action on racial justice, the environment, democracy, and faithful citizenship. As we celebrate Founders Day and the gift of our Notre Dame Catholic legacy, I am so moved by the future ahead of us. And I believe that it is in this future we will find goodness and grace together. Just as our student theme, Together, suggests, our Notre Dame journey ahead includes dynamic signposts of that vision. In Black History Month and the start of the Lenten season, in Women's History Month and religious observances of Passover, Holy in the Hindu tradition, Holy Week in the Christian tradition and Eid with our Muslim sisters and brothers, we walk together with intentionality, discernment, and most of all, purpose. Our students show us the way. As our first year students prepare and present their Women's Place projects and our seniors complete their service and justice journey with retreat and the Young Women's Advocacy Summit, they will become, in front of our eyes, the icons of that goodness and grace. So allow me to usher in this Catholic Schools Week with a moment of prayer, experienced by our students in their mentoring groups earlier this year. And so let us pray. Together, let us create a sacred space for God's goodness. Together, let us form a community where all are included. Together, let us learn side by side. Together, let us work and pray for justice. Let our hearts be wide open in the world we imagine together. St. Julie, pray for us. Amen. Thank you all for spending time with us on this State of the School video. If you heard anything that you have follow-up questions about, please let me know. Just email me and I'd be happy to either answer the question or direct you to a person that can best answer it. If you have any concerns, please email me. And I look forward to hopefully seeing you on campus at some point during the second semester, or if not that, then this, seeing you online. Thank you so much and I look forward to a wonderful second semester with you. Good night.